uh, some rules around uh, the uh, compensation assignment to employees, right? Uh, we also spoke about some standard compensation packages. Uh, sorry, some standard uh, reports in compensation. So an important tool with respect to your compensation default with respect to your eligibility criteria is a compensation package, right? And your compensation package uh, is also a tool to group your related compensation components together, right? Now there are certain configurations that you do uh, with respect to your compensation uh, which drives uh, a few transactions in Workday, right? Uh, so let me open a comp package. So if I go ahead and open any compensation package, and let's look at executive. Mm -hmm. I think that is the one which is assigned to Steve Morgan. Let's look at Steve's profile as well. Okay, uh, Steve Morgan, uh, compensation, mm, executive compensation package, right? Uh, if I look at employees compensation, go to the additional actions and uh, compensation and view compensation and this is something we have seen earlier as well uh, when we spoke about uh, the compa ratio so right now compensation is represented in terms of total base pay range uh, what i can do is and let me open this compensation package and then if I go to the additional actions and compensation package and edit compensation analytics. Uh, all right, here I have a few options. Uh, first is display total base pay range and that is why I get to see that total base pay range, right? But then at the time of compensation assignment, I also want to display the range in terms of employees primary compensation basis, right? And not just the total compensation. I can do that. I'm selecting this checkbox, which is display primary compensation basis range. Uh, I get to see the midpoint in here because uh, the checkbox display midpoint is selected right and if i uncheck this and save it uh, midpoint would no longer be displayed right the next thing and i think this was a question asked can we display uh, warnings in terms of so right now for every employee compensation the total base pay range is displayed and the warning is displayed based on the total base pay of the worker right uh, so if employees compensation or total base pay is below 200,000 or more than 400,000 system would give that warning message, right? But then I want to display warnings in terms of his primary compensation basis, which is total compensation, right? And I can go ahead and show that as well. Again, I can hide compa ratio and in that case, this compa ratio would no longer be visible. Uh, let's see if now this is a training tenant. Uh, some of the analytics don't work as expected, but all right. So now if you see, apart from that uh, primary or total base pay range, I also get to see the primary compensation basis range, right? Whereas earlier I was only seeing the total base pay Sorry. So whereas earlier I was only getting to see the total base pay range of the worker, right? And this also shows up when we propose compensation for the worker. I'm not sure if it shows up 
when we do a request compensation change. Let's see. Mm. So now you see uh, my range is represented in terms of primary compensation basis, right? Whereas earlier, and if I go ahead and make those changes once again, and if I edit this analytics, remove this, uh, let's say remove midpoint and do okay. And now if I refresh this page, first thing, I no longer get to see that midpoint, right? Okay, if I refresh this page, now that total base pay range is no longer displayed, right? And if I refresh this page, Mm, it shows me a uh, range again in terms of total base pay and not primary compensation basis, right? So you define these against the compensation package. All right, uh, so uh, I would add it here, which is compensation package analytics and similarly now if i uh, change the warning settings based on primary basis range only when my compensation is outside the range based on the primary compensation basis then system would give me a warning and not based on my total base pay okay so what are the options the options are uh, and if I go to a compensation package, right, from there launch to the additional actions, there I have the option. So compensation package, additional actions, and then edit compensation analytics. Right. Okay. Uh, what are the options available? The options are either display uh, total base pay range or display primary compensation basis range. I can uh, hide midpoint. Right, I can hide a uh, compa ratio. Right, and finally, I can display warnings based on total base pay or primary compensation basis range. Right, so either display total base pay range or display primary compensation basis range. Okay, uh, so that was uh, the compensation package analytics. Okay, uh, so we have, we have looked at only one plan type till now, the salary plan, right? Let's talk about a few other plan types. Uh, one of the most important plan types, uh, apart from, of course, your salary plan, uh, is your allowance plan, right? Now, your allowance plans are, they give a fixed amount to an employee uh, on a given frequency, right? So your allowance could be monthly, it could be weekly, it could be quarterly, it could be annual, or any other defined frequency, right? Okay, so the task is create allowance plan. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, now you have two different kinds of allowances. One is your normal HR allowance. And the next one is something called a reimbursable allowance, right? Now, what is a reimbursable allowance? A reimbursable allowance is not paid to you through your payroll. This is usually or not usually this is associated with something called an expense item, right? For example, I uh, get an annual medical allowance of let's say 12,000 right per annum uh, Now this is part part of my CTC, right? But then uh, and maybe I also get a mobile allowance of uh, Thousand per month Right now while on a monthly basis this thousand rupees gets added to my paycheck so when I open my paycheck, I can see that there's a, a mobile allowance of thousand rupees that I have got right But then when it comes to this medical allowance, I would not see this in my paycheck, right? So what happens is if in a given month I Incur some expenses. So I am basically eligible for this amount in a given year, right? So this defines my eligibility criteria but then as I mentioned, I don't get those allowance every month Only if I incur some expenses towards my medical expenditure, maybe uh, Some doctors consultation charges some over-the-counter medicines some lab tests some other generic uh, Medication I purchase and then I submit some bills against those uh, those medical expenditure that's when based on the limit that has been defined for me up to a maximum of 12,000 per year uh, It would be reimbursed to me, right? The amount gets reimbursed So if I incur more than 12,000 the maximum that gets incurred or reimbursed is 12,000 right uh, What if I spend less than 12,000 in a given year? Uh, I only get what I actually spent or incurred towards my medical bills, right? And the remaining amount would just lapse and then next year the new quota gets added So I'm again eligible for 12,000 for the next year Right, okay, so that is a reimbursable allowance now a reimbursable allowance would be associated with an expense item We do not create an expense item so your expense item is basically the touch point between workday's compensation and your finance So your finance team would create your expense items and then you just link your reimbursable allowances with your expense items What does they do? They basically allow you to identify the uh, Expense category against which you incurred an expense so let me show you again. I don't know how to create an expense item. I have never created any uh, That is also not part of the HR configuration So we'll talk about all these other aspects when we talk about our normal allowances the only Difference is as I mentioned when you create a reimbursable allowance you Link it with an expense item. Now, for example, if I see here uh, an expense item could be uh, my business travel, right? The cab I took is my expense item. And the food I took or had while traveling is my expense item. So right now there are no expense items created. Obviously, uh, we do not have the financial configuration to do that. But then if you see, uh, these are all my expense items, right? So I did some lunch when I went for my demo training. That is an expense item. So when I raise an expense, I would do that against a specific expense item, right? So my airfares, my cab travels, my lunches, my bus tickets, uh, they're all expense items uh, against which I can probably claim reimbursement, again, based on my authorization. Right? Having said that, as I mentioned, I have never worked on an expense item. This is done by or created by your finance team. I'm not sure how you create it, right? But then if you have any such thing, you would have your expense item available to you and you just link your expense items with the plan you are going to create. All right, so we'll talk about our normal allowances are non reimbursable allowances. So if you look at the description, 
sorry so if you look at the description it says reimbursable allowance plans are associated with expense items employees claim their reimbursable allowances uh, by submitting an expense report right okay so your allowance plan and the task as i mentioned is create allowance plan. okay as i mentioned your allowances could be a reimbursable allowance right and what does this checkbox do give me a second okay so reimbursable and as i mentioned this checkbox uh, is used when an allowance is not being paid through payroll but through and expense right so this is a reimbursable allowance uh, as i mentioned uh, the only second difference is now when we created our salary plan uh, when we created our compensation grade when we created our grade profile and sorry uh, so when we created all these different components till now right our salary plan our grade and grade profile and in future as well when we created when we create all our different plan types every plan every compensation component is associated with a compensation element right the only exception is when you don't know what happened all right i don't know what just happened Mm. okay i don't know what is this voice okay uh the only exception is uh as i mentioned uh when uh an allowance is selected as a reimbursable allowance only for those allowance type you don't have to associate your allowance with an a uh, compensation element and the reason is obvious right why do you need a compensation element your compensation element links your compensation with payroll right so that's how your payroll would know in which earning code to pay that particular component but then if you're not going to pay your reimbursable plan with your payroll you don't obviously need that compensation element integration right okay so when the checkbox is uh, selected right as i mentioned the compensation element field uh, will not be required when creating the sorry guys so it is not required when creating the allowance right okay uh, now apart from this your allowance plans could be of type amount based uh, you can create a percentage based allowance or 
you can create a unit based allowance right all right we are uh, currently improving an issue with your audio connection please stand by uh hey guys can you hear me fine this conference will now be recorded hello can you guys hear me hello yeah, yeah yeah we can hear you all right all right all right so we'll talk about all these three different allowance plans right you'll see that they are mostly the same except for a few minor differences right so let's go ahead and create an allowance plan uh, the first plan uh, the simpler of the three is an amount based plan uh, uh, as the name suggests when I'm creating this allowance plan I'll obviously specify an amount value for example if I look at these three plans they are all amount based plans right okay so I select my amount based plan checkbox and as I mentioned most or all of the aspects are same or consistent be between a reimbursable plan and a normal plan the only exception is you don't need that expense item or uh, that expense accumulator okay uh, expense these allowances are associated with an expense item uh, all right so again just like any other plan i would give a name to my plan and let's call this some wb card allowance right again just like my salary plan i'll specify whether it involves any any fte calculation right should the plan amount be prorated based on workers fte right uh, should this plan be included or uh, so by default it is included but then should this be excluded from employees merit calculation right as i mentioned every plan that you're going to create and everything that we have done till now uh, your grades your grade profiles your salary plans so all those compensation components we have associated them with a compensation element and that is what links my compensation with payroll so i'm going to link this with a compensation element called allowance right now this being an amount based plan obviously i'll specify the amount or the default amount right i'll specify the currency and the frequency with which that amount is paid now by default any allowance or any plan that i create uh, this amount that I defined this is just the default value at the time of plan assignment uh, This amount can be changed Right, so what I mean by that is so if I go to request compensation change for Steve Morgan uh, so compensation request compensation change uh, Let me select today's date right so if i scroll down uh, and so steve morgan already has three allowances uh, the car allowance and the mobile and the housing allowance i'm going to add one more allowance right and let me add uh, that f this allowance now if i look at the details of this allowance right so this allowance is a non overridable allowance right so i've defined that the amount is 20000 and i have selected this checkbox called no override now once i do that you see that system defaults okay it has defaulted 6000 and i'll let me select a different one uh, we'll talk about this plan later this says uh, let's look at this plan This is also a fixed amount plan. Let me check some Variable amount, okay, this is sorry a percentage based plan uh, All right, I think this is the one all right, so if you see the default setting is uh, the amount al allowance amount whatever is defined uh, it gets proposed 
but then at the time of assignment i can always go ahead and change it right and i can give any value and system would allow me to go ahead and do that right uh, so i can change the amount at the time of assignment but then if I select uh, the amount as no override, uh, which is what I think was the case with this allowance, then your amount becomes fixed and then you cannot change it at the time of plan assignment. Right. So selecting this checkbox makes your plan non overridable. OK, uh, again, your FT percentage it calculates in the same context so based on the employees FTE system would automatically prorate the amount if the amount is a uh, apply FTE percentage amount right if that is not the case in spite of the FTE of the employee you would always get the default amount uh, assigned with that plan right again uh, you define the eligibility criteria against the plan which determines for whom that plan would be defaulted or in fact available for assignment okay now uh, i have this 5000 as car allowance right and i'm basically saying all let's say let me see if there is any manager okay uh, all right, so I have selected this as my uh, eligibility criteria. So I'm basically saying all managers are eligible for getting a car allowance, right? But then I have my managers in US, but also UK and India and US and all the other countries. Now, am I telling that a manager in India would get the same car allowance of 5,000 US dollars as a manager in US? or maybe manager in UK, uh, obviously, uh, based on location, based on multiple factors, maybe the length of service or any other criteria, I want the amount to differ, right? And how can I do that? I can do that using my allowance plan profiles. So this is exactly similar to my compensation grade profiles, right? So when I created my compensation grade profiles, uh, I was basically localizing my compensation grade, right? And I'm going to do exactly that with my allowance plan profiles. So I'm basically saying that a manager in India would get 10,000 INRs uh, of car allowance, right? A manager in UK would get 4,000 GBP of the same allowance, right? And the default setting any manager in US, right? Or any other country, because this is basically my default, right? Uh, all the other employees or managers who get assigned this car allowance, if they do not fall in any one of these two profiles, then system would give them the default amount of 5000 US dollars. Right. OK, uh, let me open. Uh, all right. So if I look at this plan profile. Uh, this is a profile based plan and it says for US the amount is 6000 for UK it is 4000 and Netherlands I have created two different profiles. One is Netherlands managers. And what is this? Uh, any employee who belongs to Netherlands and his management level is manager. So he's eligible for 799. And any Netherlands non manager, he is, so again, the same configuration, but management level is individual contributor. He is eligible for 5000. Right. Now, when I assign this plan to my Steve Morgan, who we know is a US based employee, right? System assigns him 6,000, right? This being the case that he's a US based employee, this is a no override plan, right? But then if I assign the same plan to a different employee, 
so I have this employee called EMP1 who is based out of Amsterdam. So he is a employee belonging to Netherland. His management level is manager, right? If I take this employee and assign him the exact same plan, so request compensation change, right? From the same date. Right. So at this point in time, there's no compensation defined for this employee. Uh, that is all perfectly fine. Uh, and I assign him this plan. And the moment I do that, system automatically defaults 799 for this worker. And the currency is Euro. Whereas for Steve Morgan, the amount was 6,000 and US dollars. Right. So when this plan is either manually assigned, which is what I'm doing right now, because this plan is not included in an, any package uh, or it is automatically proposed by the worker based on the defaulting rules uh, system would automatically or always assign him the correct plan profile or the default plan based on the workers eligibility. Right. So now a US employee gets assigned this profile. A UK employee gets assigned this profile. A Netherlands, these two based on their eligibility. But then any other employee, let's say I hire an India employee, then he gets assigned 20,000 INR because he doesn't fit any of the plan profiles eligibility, but I'm still assigning him that plan. Right. Okay. So that was an amount based plan. Uh, all right, so what all did I define? I defined the default amount. Right, uh, obviously I defined the currency, which is, uh, let's put it here default amount and currency and uh, what all options and then frequency as well right so default amount and currency and frequency this is pretty uh, standard right okay instead of that let's say uh, i uh, make this a monthly plan then system would automatically define the annual value for the employee Right. Uh, this in this is an annual plan. Our system would automatically pay the employee the monthly equivalent of six thousand. Right. So based on the frequency, system automatically calculates what should be paid to the employee based on his pay rate uh, or his uh, pay group. Sorry. So he is a weekly payroll employee, a bi-weekly payroll employee, a monthly payroll employee. Uh, a salaried employee so based on his actual payroll frequency system would automatically give him the right amount uh, based on the overall plan frequency okay uh, we selected the compensation element which is we know pretty standard uh, M -E -N -T. Uh, we defined the no override and selecting this checkbox we know makes the plan fixed amount plan right and the defaults proposed cannot be changed at the time of plan assignment Okay, and then finally, uh, we can define, and this is constant. Uh, in fact, this is constant. Uh, all allowance plans, right, uh, will have a compensation element, right? You can define plan profiles allowance plan profiles uh, this is to localize the allowance plan right and when i say localize i just 
I do not mean just the location. I can localize it based on any of the factors, right? So I can say all employees in India are eligible for, uh, let's say, PF allowance or maybe Diwali allowance, but a manager gets 2000, but a normal employee gets 1000, right? So here I'm defining a plan for India, but the plan profiles are in terms of employee level or the management level. Right, so all allowance plans they have allowance plan profile and the compensation element and these are those specific aspects with respect to your amount based plan. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Uh, let's quickly look at a percentage based plan. Right, so again, my task is same. I'm not going to save this plan. There are quite a few plans already available. I'll just uh, so now this is a percentage based plan, right? Again, as I would expect, uh, the difference is instead of amount, I am defining a percentage. So I'm saying this plan is a 10%, right? I'm defining a compensation element. And again, I am saying this is included in this allowance compensation element. Right, I'll define the frequency and I can do this as monthly or annual or any other frequency. Again, uh, the o no override checkbox. Now you find a few differences here. So again, I give a name for my plan. I can give some description. So this is all pretty straightforward. Just like my amount based plan, I can define any eligibility criteria and I can define my plan profiles. Right. So this is all uh, constant across an amount based plan, uh, a percent based plan. But then I see a few differences. The first thing uh, you notice is that there's no currency you're defining. Right. OK, we'll come to that. Uh, the second thing you notice is something called a ceiling. Uh, your ceiling amount and ceiling currency. Right. So here you're saying this allowance whatever it is some ddfst uh, it is 10 percent of employee salary right uh, now an employee earns ten thousand his ten percent would be thousand rupees another employee earns twenty thousand his allowance would be two thousand another employee still earns a lakh rupees and his allowance would be ten thousand Right, so this 10% would obviously because I'm not giving an amount based plan. This is a percentage based plan uh, System would automatically calculate the value of this percentage based on the employee salary right um, But then I can define the maximum amount, right? So most of your plans uh, even if they are percentage uh, They have a maximum amount that can be paid out, right? So I'm saying even system would calculate this 10 percent automatically but then i am defining a ceiling amount and let's say no employee can get more than twenty thousand us dollars right or maybe two thousand us dollars now any employee whose salary or the basis is made more than twenty thousand so let's say mine is thirty thousand my ten percent becomes three thousand but then system would still give me two thousand Right. If my uh, basis is ten thousand, my allowance value is thousand, and system would give me th thousand. Right. So system would always give you the lower value between your calculated amount versus your ceiling amount. So your calculated amount is less than ceiling amount. Uh, calculated based on the percentage, system would give you the calculated amount. If your ceiling amount is less than the calculated amount then system would give you the ceiling amount right so system always assigns you an amount which is the smaller between your calculated amount and your ceiling amount okay again i can define my uh, plan profiles right so i'm saying for india employees this is uh, 90 percent uh, the ceiling amount is some XYZ and then the currency is INR and then the eligibility rule is India 
and so on and so forth right and for my us employees it is completely different uh, for us employees i want to define a ceiling amount for india employees there's no ceiling amount and so on and so forth and so i can define all these plan profiles okay but then uh, you find this one difference still right and let me first note that down so your percentage based plan uh, what do you have uh, your ceiling amount and ceiling currency right and as i mentioned this represents the maximum amount that can be paid as part of the percentage based allowance plan right an employee is always paid the lesser of the ceiling amount uh, or calculated amounts right so whatever amount is less uh, system would always pay that amount right okay and just like my amount based plan i can define my plan profiles okay this one more difference if you see right and the difference is uh, this required field so if you see my ceiling amount is not required right it is just optional so i may not have any ceiling amount requirement at all right so this is an optional field only when i define enter some value then it says enter the currency as well right or if i enter some currency then it would say okay now you have entered the currency entered the, the amount as well right so that's when it becomes required as the default setting is it is optional okay however there is one required setting uh, which is compensation basis and this is this was not there when we created our amount based plan so if i look at this amount based plan there's no concept of a compensation basis right now the question is what is this compensation basis right now if i look at an employee's profile for example steve morgan all these three totals that i see on the employee profile are his compensation basis right now why do i need a compensation basis here because when i'm saying that this allowance amount or would be calculated as 10 percent then system needs to know what on what basis should it calculate this 10 percent right so is it 10 percent of the employee's basic salary is it 10 percent of let's say for example our uh, lta let's say i want to calculate it as 10 percent of my hra just as an example right then system needs to know that this lta plan that i'm calculating it is 10 percent of my hra or it is 10 percent of my basic salary or my pf is 12 percent of some xyz component right and this you define in terms of compensation basis right so if i select total base pay for example system would now calculate steve morgan's this plan amount as 10 percent of his total base pay which would come to uh, 3172.15 or whatever right or i can say no this is not 10 percent of total base pay this is 10 percent of his total compensation right or maybe 10 percent of any other compensation basis which is already created right so we'll talk about compensation basis in much more detail later we have already seen uh, a few aspects of compensation basis right so we saw what is total base pay and how system calculates that total base pay right and we discussed about that uh, now this is one important aspect of compensation basis as i mentioned we'll talk about this in much more detail later but now compensation basis is used 
to calculate the value of percentage based allowance plans or your percentage based plans and also a few other plan types we'll talk about them later right okay for example if i look at or open any percentage based plan uh, right let's look at this car allowance percentage and it is calculated as 49604.06 now looking at this i know that it is calculating it to be 10 percent of the total compensation right and how can i confirm that if i look at the plan details right my compensation basis is total compensation so system automatically calculates the 10 percent as uh, where did this go yeah it is calculating 10 percent as 49604.06 right if i go ahead and change this plan and let me go ahead and do that Right. So instead of this, I want to say total base pay. And OK. And now if I. Mm, and so if I add it once again, WB. Our allowance now that 10 percent is calculated as 31721 which is 10 percent of this value right so your total compensation basis is being used for calculating the value of this percentage based plan right let me go ahead and make changes to this once again right so i'll edit it 1 1 2010 right i'll define ce ceiling amount as 15000 and ceiling currency as us dollars right now if i copy this remove this and add it once again right so now it is uh, limited to 15000 right so even though 10% is more because i've defined the ceiling amount as 15000 it is restricted to 15000 right so this is my second plan type which is a percentage based allowance plan right so i've defined my ceiling amount i have defined the compensation basis right and as i mentioned it is used to calculate the amount for the percentage plan right okay uh, let's look at the third plan type which is a unit based plan right again this plan is not very commonly used uh, i have not seen this plan being used very often except for just one or two projects i think just one uh, the idea is it allows you to pay an employee based on the units of work that employee has done right so maybe you want to pay your employee for every sale they make right maybe for every ticket they closed uh, for every uh, call they handle uh, every box they pack uh, every pencil they manufacture or maybe any other unit right so you can define your units and then you can define uh, your allowance based plan 
uh, to pay your employees based on the units of work that they had done they have done right this could be units of stuff manufactured units of stuff packed units of uh, tickets handled or any other factor right okay so how do you create it again pretty straightforward so if i come to create allowance plan once again right uh 1 1 2010 and unit based plan and okay right again some of these factors are straightforward i have the allowance plan profiles right i have the apply ft percentage i have the no override i have the compensation element right uh, the name of the plan the description of the plan uh, the amount per unit so i want to pay one dollar for each unit right so this is the amount per unit and this is the currency of the unit right uh, the next thing is uh, the definition of the unit itself right so i gave you all those examples right you can define your unit based plan in terms of the number of boxes they manufactured the number of tickets you have handled uh, for your it team uh, the number of calls you have taken for your customer support team or it could be any other factor so here you're selecting what are those units right and you have all these units configured right uh, the number of trucks you have loaded or whatever right the number of weeks you have worked uh, the number of uh, shelves you have cleaned or packaged uh, the number of in any uh, the number of cases you have closed and so on and so forth now again this is configurable and we'll see how this is configured but for now you're defining what is your unit right then you would specify uh, the number of units uh, that is expected or the default that is expected from a worker so from your worker you are expecting that they would close let's say 100 calls a month right so this is the default frequency of that unit based plan right okay so the expectation is you would close 100 tickets a month right uh, why am i saying 100 tickets because i have defined my units in terms of the tickets closed right and my compensation is for each ticket you close you get one us dollars right now in workday we need to understand that workday is only a tool or uh, at least workday compensation is a tool for defining these plans now you may say how do i track how many cases i have closed now that cannot be done in workday maybe you have some ticketing tool in place right maybe service now or any other ticketing tool so all that needs to be tracked in that application maybe at the end of the month uh, through your integration you would send the data of the number of tickets closed by each employee to workday and then workday payroll would do that calculation right or maybe it is some third party payroll right so how do you track the units of work done uh, that is that cannot be tracked in workday right so in workday you are defining only a plan and then you are defining which employee is eligible for that plan right okay now how do i define these units as i mentioned this is all configurable the task is uh, maintain units So the task is maintain units of measure. Right here, you'll define that units of measure. Right. Uh, so, for example, I want to define a units of measure. Let's say boxes packed. 
right now what is this boxes pack this is basically a quantity right so i'll associate it with this standard dimension right or maybe i want to define this unit so another unit saying uh, uh, bags uh, lifted or some uh, another now this is a unit of type mass right or whatever so you define your different units of measure and then define whether that unit of measure is an amount an area a quantity a time volume or anything else all right and then once you have defined here so for example that uh, case is closed i where is it right so that case is closed is a unit of measure that we created right so unit based plan it is used to pay workers based on units of work done right and as i mentioned this could be any unit uh, what do you define uh, the amount per unit right uh, the currency uh, the default units and frequency okay any questions on and how do you define your units you define your units in terms of uh, the task maintain units of measure 